Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Corporal Space Program. Today we're going to do a two-part mission. Uh, part one of today's episode is going to be um, sending some communication satellites or just some deep space probes out towards MOHO. Um, I don't think I've ever been to MOHO in Kerbal Space Program. I, I just know that based on all of the calculations that I saw in the maneuver module, that MOHO would be coming up first for us. So we're going to be using the Minmus Lifter MK1 um, to launch some uh, like four or so satellites um, out and about. Uh, I want to do this to keep the vehicle relatively light. I don't want to overburden. Um, the structure with with more than four and um, right now it's, it's probably going to be a, a pretty successful mission so you can see we're using the same satellites as before um, I'm going to be fiddling around with trying to get some science modules on there just to see if we can uh, send back at least some some temperature data or some barometric pressure data um, just out and about to bring back some um, new science for us. Um, we're going to attach some solar panels to this rig just so that we can again maintain power while we go out and then cover this all up in a fairing. So this is going to be a remote mission um, and it should be you know pretty successful I'd say. We have 7,372 meters per second of delta V though. Um, of course, as you get into space, you know, that, that will kind of counteract itself a little bit more and as we shed some of this weight. So we'll go ahead and just double check everything, make sure it's looking pretty good. You know, from last mission uh, with, the, with the lunar lander kind of breaking in half um, before we got to use it, you know, we, we're going to go ahead and fast forward. Holy cow. Okay, that, um, that was a little, little, little crazy. To, to watch warp 60 some days um and we're just gonna go ahead and launch the rock <laughs> rocket at this point i should have i should have net done it there i should have skipped forward there sooner anyways we're just gonna go ahead and launch put this into orbit around carbon and even go ahead and leave orbit just to get you know this thing kind of going here so the, the solid rocket boosters take us up to about 32,000 meters and you can see our Apple apps is quickly climbing right now. Um, I'm going to start rounding out our orbit and using the gravity assist here as much as possible with this skipper engine. So we're just gonna keep burning and burning. Um, I did not do a good flight profile here unlike the last mission where uh, I think we, we got to orbit at a pretty good kind of pace in fuel economy. I don't think I'm, I was able to do the same thing quite here with this one. Um, it wasn't, uh, you know, I should have turned earlier, essentially is what I'm trying to do, put out there to you guys. So always make sure that, you know, your flight profile is as efficient as possible so that you can save as much fuel as possible. So we'll go ahead and kick this thing out to accidentally destroy our own booster. And we're just going to leave carbon behind um, just by going all the way through past the moon. And we do have to speed up time to get, look at that moon back there as we pass. Man, it seems like I intersect the moon all the time by accident more so than anything in this game. So here's our satellite configuration. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and transfer some technology science gathering out here as we circle the sun and we will create an intersect to MOHO. Um, it, it put it behind us, which is a little frustrating. Um, I would have thought that we would have been able to get something a little bit easier developed at this point, but that's okay. That is okay. Sometimes working with the maneuver node can take a little while, um, just because every little fine detail is going to affect the 
the vehicle in a, in a major, major way here. So you can see this is going to take 3,400 meters a second of acceleration. We do have enough fuel on us. Uh, something at this stage in the flight that I did not realize is the satellites have their own uh, fuel tanks and their own engines in case they need to do maneuvers out there. This is nice and wonderful, except for um, I forgot to turn off the fuel flow from the stage that we're using now to the satellite. So we're actually draining the satellite fuel tanks at this moment um, in, in the operation, which is kind of bad for us. Um, so I, I need to remember to, to kind of disable fuel flow through connectors um, and docking ports kind of going forward so that this doesn't happen again. It is a long burn. Um, and what I end up doing is uh, once we get in, kind of with a in intersect to Moho, um, I'm going to have to um, change some fuel around to these little guys so that they're able to um, succeed in doing some sort of maneuver. I don't know what sort of maneuver we're going to get out of them. Honestly, they don't have a terrible amount of, of velocity to them. Um, probably not even enough to capture itself around Moho, but you know, we're, we're going to give it a shot just to kind of see how it goes. This will be the first interplanetary mission after all. Extending the solar arrays, we're going to get this kind of cool looking, um, cool looking little uh, star pattern with the solar panels. I, I really like that. It's pretty, pretty nice. So we're trying to get this as close as possible because what I would want to do is get the periaps very low so that I fly by the planet for longer. And if we can do that, hopefully the gravity of this thing can assist. But you can see just to circularize our orbit, that's going to be another 5,000 uh, delta V. Um, which is just simply not what this vehicle is going to be capable of. Um, even if I try and almost crash into the surface to, to bend something out there. So these satellites, these four satellites, it's essentially a dead mission uh, at that point. But I'm going to get as close as possible to Moho just so that we can um, kind of get get the range of science, right, from, from high over Moho to to an or and nearby to close to the surface um so that that's the goal um, we're going to release our satellites early and maybe have them drift along with us and at this point this is when i realized that the fuel tanks are just drained they're just gone um you know so i'll extend finish extending the solar panels uh, in the antennas and be like, okay, I'll drop these two off at Moho and then maybe we'll try and slingshot somewhere else. Um, but now I'm noticing, oh, I only have 77 meters a second of, of Delta V on these satellites. So I'm going to drain the main tank, put them back into a couple of these satellites to get as much out of it as possible and let this main, main core kind of just end its time. You know, it's, it's kind of done. It's a done deal on that thing. So we really only have about 950 meters a second of velocity on the fully fueled one. And this one doesn't have much either. So um, it's, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how this goes. We'll, we'll create an alarm um, just so that we can have something here. Moho intercept, my changes. There we go, and then we go back to the Space Center. So that's that's kind of first part of this episode, right? Launching a rocket towards Moho and get that ready to go. Now, we're going to build uh, the first piece of our space station. This is um, going to be kind of the command storage module um, of our space station. So we're gonna be able to do a um, capula at the top. We're gonna to use a lander can as like a, a vertical section. Um, the storage beneath of it, um, which is going to be maybe like an airlock that people use to go 
in and out um, of the vessel from like a lore perspective. Obviously, they're most likely going to be using the ladders out the back side here. Um, trying to come up with a way to make this look a little bit more science-y and detailed on the interior. Um, even though the interior will probably be closed most of the time. But maybe we can put a science module in there as like a, hey, this is like the interior column that maybe the, the Kerbins crawl through still, um, while the outer rings a little bit more for EVA purposes. I didn't really like the looks of this, so we end up kind of changing this and getting rid of a lot of this idea and going with more of a, well, what's, what's, what if, you know, if this, these doors are closed, um, what if this is just more like a, um, standard storage room for the Kerbals and we can use docking ports at the top and the bottom to make it look more like an airlock because the new kind of looks to the docking ports. Um, you know, there's a little window there that look pretty cool. So this is more like an airlock sort of feel on here now. Um, there are problems with this, right? You know, obviously, while this is open um, and the airlock is in use, we'll also even add some interior lights in here. Um, no one can traverse without going EVA between the command uh, capsula and the actual main core of the the um, storage kind of addition beneath this area but you know it, it, it's just a little little thing to make this look um, pretty cool looking and you know with the interior lights and dome lights or, or other things like that I think it has a good potential for a um, a narrative, you know, because to me it's, it's about them, them narratives. Going to attach a few extra struts up here so that we can get a light on these looking pretty good. Um, it lights up the interior very nicely with this, which is pretty cool. And eventually, of course, we'll try and build um, more onto the space station as we go. Of course, we're going to need a science wing. We're going to need uh, a solar array of some kind um, for like energy storage. We're, get, we're gonna go ahead and pack some struts into the, the first storage kind of area. We'll uh, pack some EVA repair kits too in case anything goes terribly wrong. We can pack some EVA fuel. Um, this, this module doesn't need to be fully supplied at launch so we can always re do some resupply missions up there. I'm gonna add some radiators um, as like just spaced armory look um, and also for just heat management. They're not really necessary, um, but it should be a pretty cool vibe on it. Uh, to make the top command module look a little bit more command-like, we'll add a few antenna to it. We have a dish that can unfold along the side there. Some minor solar panels along the edge just so that it can um, generate some of its own power um, just to keep this module kind of running. Um, but after this, this, you know, there, there, there might be a few other of these types of panels, but I do want to use the large um, extendable uh, panels at some point on this station. And this, this, this station is going to be definitely like a multi almost year project for our Kerbals. We have a ladder that takes us up and down. We even have some ladders that we can grab onto by the solar panels in case we need to repair them. Um, spotlights hanging outside of the um, EVA storage locker area. And we just wanna check to see how this might look with a probe on here and we'll have to attach a nice little rocket to this to get this up into an orbit. Um, the orbit is going to matter. Um, don't quite know yet on uh, what height we want this on here. Um, we could always change the height of the station too. I think I'm going to start at around 100,000 um, kilometers or something like that, just to get a decent 
little gap for us. We're also going to seal this on here. I think I'm actually going to build a new rocket for this. Um, some sort of heavy lifting vehicle. Unless I just save it at this point. Space Station Command Center. Yes. yes, yes, yes. So we got some new fuel tanks, so we might be trying to use some of these. Here, the skipper engine. Um, that's probably going to be the thing to put it into its final position, in a way. And then we can throw that onto there. Great. Throw a nice mainsail engine, or... Um, yeah, mainsail's probably going to be ideal for this. We haven't really used the mainsail engine. We've been using kind of this, the skipper engines for a lot of our heavier rockets right now. Um, or we could attach a engine plate plate and do like this, you know, so you can get three engines if you want to. Obviously, it's not as efficient as just using a mainsail, um, but you know, there's options there. You could also use the the built-in uh, fuel tank plus dual engine combo sort of deal, which can look good. We'll go ahead and put this in a shroud, try and keep the profile as clean as possible, and then we are just going to use some boosters on the side, some thin ones. Because, you know, we're just going into a Kerbin orbit. We don't have to go anywhere crazy with this. And this kind of rocket is good to go, I think. Um, this should be enough to get us out there and in position, for sure. So these launches, you know, it's gonna be a multi-stage thing. I don't wanna make very expensive uh, rockets that I have to try and figure out to lift like tons and tons and tons of materials up into space. I would rather um, be able to just uh, get get each module itself up for the most part and if I need to attach additional things we might be able to send an engineer. So Valentina is uh, hitching a ride in the command module. I did not know that I set her to come along so um, she's a little bit of a stowaway. She wants to command the first space station here for us, and we are happy to oblige. So this liftoff is a little bit more of a standard profile. Definitely a better, uh, as we hit kind of max um, atmospheric pressure there for a little bit. And we're going to get into a decent orbit. Uh, right now, our Apo apps is all the way at like 331, which is all the way out close to our satellite network, which is kind of high, um, higher than I remember me doing this mission. But you know, half the time I, I seem to forget what I record. So I guess I'm going to set the Perry apps as uh, maybe 155 instead, because I want this to be a closer um, space station, so that we can just do some quick missions up here. And back and forth if we need to like bring fuel and cargo um obviously it's about it's about twice the distance um to get into space so you know while it it is um closer you know we still have that separation between that seventy thousand kind of orbital for for our going to min miss in the moon and then we have you know, just, just some wiggle room. So we'll go ahead and ditch the engine at this point. I could have kept it on here for now, but um, it's kind of taking up the only docking port that's on this module. So we're going to ditch it and just make that crash back to Kerbin. We're going to check this thing out, turn on the lights, uh, extend all the antennas, uh, take a look at the interior view looking back at Kerbin. I love stations in, in Kerbal Space Program. They're really cool. Um, and hopefully this station will grow into something that looks uh, pretty nice and is functional. Also, it looks like Valentina can go into here, but can't really reboard this uh, little little area. So anyways, with that, Kerbal Space Program is done for today. Feel free to subscribe for more creative goodness such as this. Hit that like button. And I'll see you guys in orbit in the next episode on the channel.